Greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Uh, this is going to be the continuation of the cross in the tabernacle or seeing Christ in the tabernacle. Now, there are, we did the, uh, the outside, where the, it was kind of like a, a wall of tents. We did the door, we did the brazen altar, and we did the wash basin or laver. Now we are going to take a look at the lamp stand, the table with the showbread, and the incense. So, um, what is I find interesting is they took the fire from from what I understand. Uh, now I could make this a hours and hours long study, but you know most people don't want to do that. They just want to get a, a general overview you know, get most of the meat without uh, all the crumbs, if you can put it that way. But uh, from what I understand, they took the fire from where they were doing, uh, from the brazen altar where they were doing the animal sacrifices and used that fire for the, uh, the light, the, uh, the candle, well, we call them, I don't know, candlesticks, the, uh, the lamp, the lamps and the uh, for the incense. Now there was actually some priests that did the procedure wrong, where they offered strange fire. Now, I don't know exactly what that means, but it means that uh, it wasn't the way that the Lord wanted it to be done, and the Lord killed those priests because. They were being disrespectful, I guess you could say, in a way. So when you come to the Lord, you come to him his way. You don't come to him your way. You know, and God the Father sent Jesus, and you he's the only door, and you come through his way or not at all. Now, remember, the tribe of Levi, of which Moses and Aaron were, there were 12 tribes. Levi was one of them. Uh, Levi was the, the Levitical priesthood. They were the ones that were to service the tabernacle. They were the ones that were only ones authorized to do service before the Lord. The tribe of Judah was to be the king tribe. They were the civil rulers. The tribe of Levi were to be the religious leaders. So, Leviticus chapter 10, verse 1. And Nadab and Abihu, Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went out a fire from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Now, these were the sons of Aaron. Okay? And uh, you come to the Lord his way. Obviously, they disrespected the Lord. They didn't do the things the way the Lord said to do. And uh, fire went out from the Lord, devoured them, and they died. Bingo! You're going to go the Lord's way or not. That's just the way it is. How about a second witness? Numbers 26. Uh, let's see. Verse 59. And the name of Amram's wife was Jochebed, the daughter of Levi, whom her mother bare to Levi in Egypt. And she bare unto Amram 
Aaron and Moses and Miriam, their sister. And unto Aaron was born Nadab and Abihu, Eliezer and Ithamar. And Nabab and Abihu died when they offered strange fire before the Lord. There you go. You come to the Lord his way. That's just the way it is. There's no two ways about it. All right, let's take a look at number, I'm sorry, no, Exodus. Exodus chapter 30, verse 1. And thou shalt make an altar to burn incense upon. Of shittim wood thou shalt make it. A cubit shall be the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof. Four squares shall it be, and two cubits shall be the height thereof. Two horns thereof shall be of the same. Now, a cubit is about half a meter. For those of you in Europe, or about half a yard, 18 inches, uh, approximately for those of you in using the imperial uh, measuring system, which is America. Uh, so, and thou shalt overlay it with pure gold, the top thereof and the sides thereof round about, and the horns thereof, and thou shalt make unto it a crown of gold round about. And the two golden rings shalt thou make to it under the crown of it by the two corners thereof. Upon the two sides of it thou shalt make it, and they shall be for places for the staves to bear it withal. Uh, stave is just basically like a a stick, a pole, and uh, they would use that to carry it. And thou shalt make the staves of shittim wood and overlay them with gold. And thou shalt put it before the veil that is by the Ark of the Testimony, the Ark of the Covenant, right? Before the mercy sheet, seat, before the mercy seat that is over the testimony where I will meet thee. And Aaron shall burn thereon sweet incense every morning when he dresseth the lamps. Uh, the Jews call it the menorah, menorah uh, the seven-branched candlestick. Well, we call it a candlestick, but they were using probably olive oil with a wick, which is probably, you know, olive oil burns, believe it or not. It does. I've used it. In a hurricane when I had no power, I had I had olive oil. And I guess we'd used up all our candles. I remember one year we had uh, two hurricanes in a month. Power was out for, I think, two weeks with one. And then we got power on. And then, like, a little while later, we lost power for another, I think, like 10 days. Uh, I don't know if it was the 10 days and 14 days or the 14 days and then the 10 days, but uh, I had spent a lot of money on some hurricane supplies and uh, my father complained because I bought, spent a lot of money on, brought him a bunch of supplies and he thought, ah, oh, you're just throwing your money away. You know, hold on to your money. Uh, Dad was one of the original grumpy old men. But it's funny that the last day, uh, on the second time we had that hurricane, on the last day where all the hurricane supplies had ran out, that was the day that the power came back on. All the candles were gone. You know, <laughs> I was like, oh, thank you, Lord. Uh, yeah, he, Lord, Lord playing that out pretty good. So, but yeah, they used uh, olive oil. You could use that. For uh, and that's what they, I believe that's what they used for uh, the lamps. You know, we call them candlesticks, but you know, really they were lamps. Verse seven: And Aaron shall burn thereon sweet incense every morning when he dresseth the lamps. He shall burn incense upon it. When Aaron lighteth the lamps at even, he shall burn incense upon it. A perpetual incense before the Lord throughout your generations incense a sweet smell uh i guess holy smoke 
a perpetual incense before the Lord throughout your generations. And ye shall offer no strange incense thereon, nor burnt sacrifice, nor meat offering, neither shall ye pour drink offerings thereon. No strange fire, people. And uh, we're going to get back to this. So what is the incense? What, what, what is that for um, in the New Testament? Now here's an interesting verse. Leviticus 16, 13. And he shall put the incense upon the fire before the Lord that the cloud of the incense may cover the mercy seat that is upon the testimony that he die not. And uh, one of the things that they would use, evidently, is frankincense. And if you look at the word frankincense, uh, it's franken with the word incense. Um, and what did the uh, wise men that came to see Christ when he was born in the manger, what did they bring? Gold, myrrh, and frankincense. Isn't that funny? They brought uh, a Levitical, something a Levitical priest would use. And they brought that to the Christ child. So, and, uh, but we're going to cover more about the uh, lamps later. All right, let's go hit the uh, New Testament here. In Matthew 2.11, okay, the... Um, the wise men came, I guess what, the Magi, uh, came, and uh, let's read what happened. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, and frankincense, and myrrh. Now, what was... Uh, what was one of the jobs of uh, John the Baptist's dad? Well, that's in the book of Luke. Let's look at Luke chapter 1, verse 5. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias, of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Now this is John the Baptist's daddy. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. And they had no child, because that Elizabeth was barren, and they both were now well stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, According to the custom of the priest's office, his lot, or his job, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. Okay? That was his job. All right, let's go to the book of Revelation. Uh, the book of Revelation. To... Uh, actually has reference to be something to be revealed. You know, I, I hear people say, oh, I don't understand the book of Revelation. Well, read the, Re read the Old Testament. All the symbolism for Revelation comes from the Old Testament. Well, at least all that I know of. Uh, I mean, all that, all that symbolism comes from the rest of the Bible. And... A revelation means something that's revealed, you know, to make known. All right, let's go to chapter 8, and we're going to look at verse 1. Now, what does incense have to do with uh, the New Testament? Well, we're about ready to find out. Revelation 8, 1, And when he had opened the seventh seal... There was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. 
And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, seven angels. Keep that in mind. That's going to come up again. That number seven comes up a lot in the Bible. You could do a, a whole study on just numbers in the Bible. There's people that have done studies of numbers in the Bible. It's really interesting. Um, Bullinger, in his companion Bible, has a study of numbers in the Bible, which I found very interesting. Um, sadly, I lost my book. I have lost everything that I've owned at least two or three times. So, and it's usually people claiming to be Christians. It's, I'm getting tired of losing everything. But I had uh, Bullinger's Companion Bible. And it had a numbers in scripture, and it was very interesting. There's another guy named uh, Ivan Panin. He was a Russian, and uh, he did an interesting study on numbers in the Bible. He was actually a mathematician. So, you know, he was like, whoa, these are, this is really interesting here. All right, so. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Now, remember, there's seven trumps in the Bible. And the seventh trump is the last one. And the Bible says that we are going to be changed, resurrected, or uh, given new bodies at the last trump. Somebody send pre-tribbers a memo. They just don't want to believe that, but... They want you to think there's a last trump before the tribulation. And then there's another seven last, another seven trumps after that. So they want, to, want you to think there's a last trump before the uh, tribulation and then another last trump at the end of the tribulation. I'm sorry, but you know, in the alphabet, the last letter in the English language is Z. There's not a, another last letter before the last letter. I mean, you know, I mean, these people, you got to wonder, did they do drugs, a lot of drugs? I mean, I did drugs when I was a kid. But are their brains so scrambled that they just can't get this stuff? I mean, really? I mean, I'm not some great Bible scholar. By no means do I, and I'm not a prophet or anything. But it's just so plain and simple. You know, turn off your television. Quit listening to TV preachers. You know, if they got a Learjet, uh, you know, is God blessing them or is the devil blessing them? Think about it. Seven angels with seven trumpets. Verse 3. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. That's what they used. They used a censer to burn incense with. That's what it was. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. Incense is tied in with the prayers of the saints. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings in an earthquake. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepare, uh, prepared themselves to sound. Now, this is not a study on Revelation, so I'm going to stop it right here. All right, how about Revelation 5.8? And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials, 
golden vials full of odors. Are these odors incense? I I think so, but I, you know, don't hold me to it. Having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. Golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. Ah, there we go. Does that make some sense? Or incense? All right, let's take a look at the uh, table. Well, now let's do the, um, I guess we'll do the candlestick. Now the candlestick had, uh, it had three branches on one side and three branches on the other side and then one in the center. So it was seven, seven, uh, it was a seven points of light. It had seven lamps on this. The, the Jews call it the menorah. So, where what do we read about the, the menorah or the lamp? All right, let's take a look at uh, the lamps. Exodus 25, 37. And thou shalt make the seven lamps thereof, and they shall light the lamps thereof, that they may give light over against it. Exodus 27, 20. And thou shalt command the children of Israel that they bring the pure olive oil beaten for the light to cause the lamp to burn always. Now, what is olive oil indicative of? Boy, I could do an entire study on just olive oil. And no, we're not talking about Popeye's girlfriend. Popeye the Sailor Man. Uh, yeah, that's for you young folks that don't know what I'm talking about. Now, what was the lamp indicative of? Well, 2 Samuel twenty two twenty nine, Thou art my lamp, O Lord. And the Lord will lighten my darkness. Isn't Jesus the light of the world? I must have said that uh, John 8, 12 uh, hundreds of times. Oh, yeah. In Proverbs six twenty three, For the commandment is a lamp. And the law is light. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Proverbs 39, The light of the righteous rejoiceth, but the lamp of the wicked shall be put out. Wow. Isaiah 62 and verse 1, For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness, and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. Oh, how about Matthew 25, verse 1? Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. And they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Now, um, oil in the new... Uh, well, oil is indicative of... A number of things, we'll cover it later, but um, it's indicative of the Holy Spirit. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps, 
While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Now, this always confused me, because how can you buy the Holy Spirit? Well, the Bible does record that Christ paid for us with a price. Think about that. And how did he pay for us? With his life, right? 1 Corinthians 7.23 Ye are bought with a price. Be not ye the servants of men. 1 Corinthians 6.20 For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. How are we bought with a price? Well, Christ paid for us with his life. That was the price. So maybe that is how we're supposed to buy the oil, the anointing, the Holy Spirit. I'm not sure. You know, I'll be honest with you. This, I don't know. Matthew 25 and verse 9. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were uh, ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Oh yeah, make sure your lamps are ready, I guess. That's the, uh, that's the Bob translation. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit. Behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. And sorry, I don't think it's one of those uh, gay rainbows. Well, no, I'm not sorry. It's not going to be one of those gay rainbows. I don't think so. Verse 4, And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting. Now, I'm going to tell you what. I think these four and twenty elders, I think these are the twelve tribes of Israel, each one of the, you know, the, you know, Jacob, uh, Levi, Judah, Reuben, Issachar, Naphtali, you know, uh, those, Benjamin, that's who I think they are. But Bob, that's only 12. What about the other 12? Uh, how about the 12 apostles? And no, not Judas Iscariot. Probably, I, I think, Paul. But hey, that's just me. That's who I think the tw four and twenty elders are. But, hey, your guess, just as good as mine. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the crowns proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire. Ah, seven lamps of fire. Wow, where did I read that before? Oh yeah, that's what we've been reading about the last five minutes, right? Or ten minutes, I'm not sure. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Huh. 
seven lamps burning, which are the seven spirits of God. All right, let's go read Revelation chapter 1. I guess we'll start at verse 1. We'll probably read the whole thing. Um, and then we're going to do a little bit on uh, oil. And then go to the, uh, the table, the showbread table. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Now, when the Lord says, must shortly come to pass, uh, you got a group of people called preterists, and they'll try to make you think that all this stuff happened back in 70 AD. But in the book of Peter, well, let's take a look at Peter. All right, 2 Peter 3.8. Remember, we're talking about shortly coming to pass, probably from the Lord's perspective. 2 Peter 3.8, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. What does ignorant mean? It means you don't know something. When it comes to brain surgery and uh, rocket science, Bob is ignorant. Calculus, Bob's ignorant. The Bible, not so much. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. So when the Lord says this is going to shortly come to pass, well, you're talking a couple days, you know, maybe a day or two. For us, it's a couple thousand years, but to the Lord, shortly coming to pass, right? All right, uh, Revelation 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things which he saw. Do you know that John, that wrote this book, was the only apostle that didn't die for his faith? Do you know that? The only one. Somebody tell the pre-tribbers. But God would never let us, you know, die. God's not a wife beater. What? Uh, the apostles could die for their faith? And you're too good to die for your faith? Really? God's not a wife beater? Is that what you say? Uh, who were these people that died for their faith? Who was Stephen? Chopped liver? Well, after they got through stoning him, who knows? He might have been, his liver might have been chopped up. I don't know. I mean, John was the only apostle, well, other than Judas, who hung himself. He was the only apostle that didn't die for his faith. And pre tribbers say, oh, God wouldn't do that to us. We're the church, we're his bride. Ugh. Where do these people get their doctrines from? Oh, I know, the devil. Yeah. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all these things which he saw. Verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth. Blessed is he that readeth. And they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Didn't we just read about the seven spirits, the seven uh, angels? Oh, yeah, we did. Verse 5. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and he's not a Jehovah's Witness, he's the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us, 
unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. You know that uh, wash basin in the, the tabernacle? Yeah. Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. And hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. All right, think, a couple things to think about here. One, uh, the Bible's revelation is not in chronological order. Um, chronological has reference to, to time. You know, here it is, you're reading chapter 1, and it says, you know, every eye is going to see him. He comes with the clouds, okay? So it's kind of telling you, okay, this is coming for the future. But if you listen to a bunch of people that are called preterists, and they, they say that Revelation, this book was written before 70 AD, and that in 70 AD, when the Roman armies invaded Jerusalem and destroyed it, all this stuff was fulfilled in 70 AD. There's nothing left uh, to happen for prophecy. It's all in the past. Everything's in the past. Uh, and then you got the other people that are called, um, well, I guess they call them histor historist, historist, H-I-S-T-O-R-C-I-S-T -I -I or something like that. I don't know. I try not to go into these fancy theological words because, you know, you want to go get a doctorate degree at the Bible college so you can understand soteriology and eschatology and all these other fancy $20 words, go for it. But, uh, you know, I'm not trying to impress somebody with a doctorate degree. Uh, you know, I'm just looking like I'm just an average Joe trying to teach the average Joe. But then you got the people called the futurists, and they'll try to tell you that everything's in the future. So everything's in the future or everything's in the past. No. Part of it was fulfilled in the past. Part of it's yet to be fulfilled in the future. Did we see Christ coming in the clouds? Read Acts chapter 1. Read Acts chapter 1. It says he's going to come in the clouds. The same way they beheld him go up into the clouds, they said he's going to come back the same way, in the clouds. Did you see Christ coming in the clouds? I didn't. Behold, he cometh with the clouds, and every eye shall see him. Now, how can preterists who say that all has happened in the past, and they'll say, oh, well, you know, this it's figuratively, Bob. You just don't understand these things. You know, it's all figuratively. Well, maybe their salvation is figuratively too. It says, Behold, he, Christ, behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. My eyes didn't see him. So am I part of every eye? How about you? So if you didn't see him coming in the clouds, this is future. It hasn't happened yet. And yes, Matthew 24 was a great deal of that was fulfilled in 70 AD in the past. I admit it. Uh, if somebody wants to be a partial preterist, go for it. I can believe that. No arguments. But if they say everything was passed in 70 AD, they're idiots. They're heretics. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. Verse 8. Oh boy, Hebrew roots people hate this stuff. I am Alpha and Omega. What was Alpha? Alpha is the first letter of the Greek alphabet. What's Omega? The last letter. Alpha, Beta. Beta was the second letter. Alpha is the first letter of the Greek alphabet. Beta is the second letter. Guess where, get, When you say alphabet, guess where that comes from? 
alpha beta alphabet that's where we get the word alphabet from the first two letters of the Greek alphabet that's basically saying Jesus saying I am A to Z except for the Greek the New Testament was written in Greek so that's Alpha and Omega it's not the Aleph and the Tav no which is the first and last letters of the Hebrew I am Alpha and Omega the beginning and the ending saith the Lord which is and which was and which is to come the Almighty I John who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ which was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying I am Alpha and Omega the first and the last and what thou seest write in a book and send it unto the seven churches remember seven spirits seven churches and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia unto Ephesus guess what Paul wrote a, a, a letter to the Ephesians that's what if you lived in Ephesus you were an Ephesian that's what they were called unto Ephesus and unto Smyrna and unto Pergamos and unto Thyatira and unto Sardius and unto Philadelphia and unto Laodicea guess what when they held a church council trying to decide what books belonged in the Bible and which books didn't like the Gospel of Thomas um, the latest Deceans didn't like the book of Revelation because John uh, didn't speak very highly of them when uh, the Lord was speaking to him telling him to write these things down he wrote about the book of he wrote in the book of Revelation that the Laodiceans were not exactly the kind of church that God uh, was pleased with so they said oh well we don't like Revelation we don't want that in our Bible well sorry Charlie but only the best tuna gets to be star kissed verse 12 and I turned to see the voice that spake with me and being turned I saw the seven golden candlesticks seven the menorah right and in the midst of the seven candlesticks one like unto the Son of Man clothed with a garment down to the foot and girt about the paps with a golden girdle now this is the description of what Jesus looked like people somebody send the black Hebrews a memo but they're not gonna believe it anyways they'll they'll just say man that white man he 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 mistranslate that Bible yeah yeah he do yeah he whitewashed the Bible I I mean they they told me this I you know they believe this stuff verse 14 his head and his hairs his head and his hairs were white like wool as white as snow and of course the black Hebrews will say yo 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 yeah he his hairs were like woolly woolly man who got woolly hair but the Bible doesn't says his hair was woolly the Bible says his hairs were white like wool as white as snow you know, it didn't say his hair was woolly looking. Boy, I, I, you know, they read this stuff and they just, you know, I don't know. I don't know where they get this stuff from, but it ain't the Bible. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. You know what? For years I thought he had like albino eyes. You know red eyes but I realize I probably am wrong have you ever looked at a gas stove and the flame 
What color is the what color is the flame oftentimes? Blue. Could be yellow, could be orange, could be red. But when you look at a gas like a propane stove, blue. Did he have blue eyes and white ha uh, white head and hair? Blonde? Possibly. I mean, think about it. Where did Paul go when he did his travels, when he was the evangelist for the so-called Gentiles? He went to Greece. He went to Europe, Italy. Who built the churches? Europe. Who printed the Bibles? Europe. Who spread the gospel over all the world? Europe. What group of people proclaimed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Europe and America, for the most part. Think about it. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them. Of course, you wouldn't know that today, you know? I mean, but there were times in history when Europe was aflame with the gospel. But that was a long time ago. And his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if burned in a burn, burned in a furnace, and his voice as a sound of many waters. What color is brass? Did you know that a brass burning in a serve a, a, a furnace is is white? It burns white hot. And then when it cools, it's a light golden brown. Uh, have you ever seen a surfer in California with? Blonde hair and blue eyes out in the sun. What color is the skin? Tan, brown, bronze colored? Yeah. Verse 16. Uh, I'm sorry. And his voice has the sound of many waters. Verse 16. Here we go. Here's the punchline coming up. And he had in his right hand seven stars. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his, at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the seven, and the and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. Verse twenty. Here's the punchline. The mystery of the seven stars. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. You know what that seven, seven lamped, seven branched lamp was in the Old Testament? It foretold the church, the churches. Let's read that again. Verse 20, Revelation 1.20. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand are, uh, on the right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Oh, yeah. Think about that. What did that foretell in scriptures? You know, everything in the Old Testament points to the new. Foresha a foreshadow. Think about it, people. And what about oil? All right, let's take a look at oil briefly. Because, you know, you would use the oil in the lampstands, at least in the Old Testament, right? Exodus 25, verse 6. Oil for the light, spices for anointing oil, and for sweet incense. 
Exodus 28, 41. And thou shalt put them upon Aaron thy brother and his sons with him, and shalt anoint them. What do they anoint them with? Oil. And consecrate them and sanctify them, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. Exodus 29 and verse 7. Then shalt thou take the anointing oil and pour it upon his head and anoint him. Uh, now, priests were anointed, prophets could be anointed, and kings were anointed, which was indicative of God's spirit for whatever service you were called to do. Exodus 30, 30, And thou shalt anoint Aaron and his sons, and consecrate them, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. Oh, yeah. How about Leviticus 8.12? And he poured of the anointing oil upon Aaron's head and anointed him to sanctify him. Oh, yeah. All right, turn to 1 Samuel chapter 16. A little bit of a background. Uh, Saul, King Saul, was uh, king over Israel. He started off pretty good, and then he started messing up. And he wasn't uh, obedient. He wasn't faithful. And there was a time when um, the Lord rejected him. And now the Lord's going to take King David, well, take David and make him king. And uh, Jesse was the father of David. And uh, David and Jesse were direct descendants of Christ. So 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 11. And Samuel, now well, Samuel was a prophet. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy, and withal of a beautiful countenance, and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, anoint him, for this is he. Uh, if you look up that word ruddy, uh, there's a verse where the um, King David faced Goliath, and, a, and another place where it says ruddy. Whether you look it up in English or in the Hebrew, it basically means the same thing. Uh, means to be able to blush, uh, to be made red, rosy, uh, like Irish have a ruddy complexion. Uh, in the Hebrew, it also has reference to uh, red hair with freckles. There's a very real possibility that King David had red hair and freckles. And if Christ had blonde hair, redheads and blondes run in the same family. So... All right, so verse 12, And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy, and withal of a beautiful countenance, and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil, and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So... Samuel took the horn of oil, anointed him, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah, but the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. So, the horn of oil uh, was indicative of the Holy Spirit, right? And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. And that's in 1 Samuel 16 and verse 13. So you had the uh, priests of God that were anointed. You had the kings of uh, Israel get anointed. 1 King 1, 34. And let Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet anoint him there, king over Israel, and blow ye the trumpet and say, God save King Solomon.
How about a Psalms chapter 23? Very, very famous. Boy, I've read this at a number of funerals. Yeah, I used to be a volunteer chaplain at the uh, South Florida Veterans Cemetery. Boy, I tell you what, that's, that's rough. A Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Keep that in mind about the table, because we're getting ready to do the table of the showbread. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. How about Isaiah 61 1? Uh, Jesus read this very thing when he was starting his ministry. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me, anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. And we'll come back to that. How about... Luke chapter 4, and we're going to start in uh, verse 16. Luke 4, 16. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah. and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it is written, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me, anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, and he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down, and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And that is what Jesus had to say to them. Oh, yeah. How about Acts 10, Acts 10 38? How God anointed how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Oh yeah. Verse Hebrews 1 9 Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Now, here is something you hardly ever hear about anymore in churches. James 5.14 Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Good idea, right? And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up, and if he hath committed sins, 
they shall be forgiven him. Oh yeah. So the oil goes into the lampstand, which is indicative of, I guess, the Spirit of God, right? All right, what about the table? The table, oh uh, yeah, the table with the showbread. Psalms 23, verse 5, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. What about the showbread? Exodus 25, verse 30, And thou shalt set upon the table showbread before me alway. Hebrews 9, 1, Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle made, the first wherein was the candlestick and the table and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. Now what was the showbread, this bread that was on the table? What was that indicative of? Well, John 6.51. 6.51, 6, John. Jesus speaking, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. Well, let's do a little bit of reading in John chapter 6, verse 47. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Oh, yeah. All right, let's go to the book of Mark, chapter 14, verse 22. Uh, this is the Last Supper. And as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed and break it, break it and gave to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks... He gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until that day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God. So Jesus is not going to be drinking the fruit of the vine until the marriage supper of the Lamb. Luke 14, 15, And when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Now, if you wanted to do, there was a, uh, a feast of unleavened bread, which has reference to the Passover. Um, I've done previous studies on that so I'm not going to really go into that here but um, unleavened bread was to, you know so that you could uh, cast out all the leaven which was likened unto sin uh, out of our lives so in 1 Corinthians 5 8 therefore let us keep the feast not with old leaven neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. 1 Corinthians 10, 16 and verse 17. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we, being many, are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. Just remember, Jesus is that bread of life. 
All right, this is the end of this study. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' precious name, amen.